said good morning counterculture church it's feast time look at your neighbor and say it's feast time it's time to celebrate it's time to celebrate amen good morning church i just want to welcome you in the name of jesus you can take your seats for just a moment hallelujah it's so good to be in the presence of god amen it's feast time as i said it's a week of outpouring it's pentecost it's open heavens are you excited are you expectant look at your neighbor and ask them are you expectant amen remember that god will meet you at the point of your expectation amen hallelujah so i just want to welcome each and every one of you this morning firstly do we have any new visitors if you can just raise your hands amen <laughs> hallelujah we would like to welcome all of our new visitors amen please do not leave after the service join us at our cafe for free cappuccino we just want to get to know you amen and then church just some announcements with the conference please take note that tonight's service session two is at half past six do not miss it invite your friends invite your families amen and then tomorrow night session is at 7 p.m and tuesday night session is also at 7 p.m amen before i hand over to michelle i just want you guys to begin to stop your spirits this morning we're too quiet for celebration church amen it's open heavens amen it's time for the holy spirit to come down to baptize us so i want you to just stop a hunger within within yourself amen so can we just get to our feet amen hallelujah i want you to lift up your hands and just repeat after me i want you to say jesus you are the great baptizer today i ask you that you would baptize me with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit. And, fire. And, fire. and fire and fire and fire and fire amen are you hungry is there an expectation and a stirring within your spirit amen hallelujah hallelujah I mean good morning church how are you doing this morning are you excited for the conference and then, son, before we start, I just want to share a scripture with you. It's 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6. It says, That is why I remind you to fan into flame the gracious gift of God, that inner fire, the special endowment which is in you through the laying on of hands. Can I just tell you that fanning into flame that special gift, fanning into flame is an action. You cannot just sit here and expect God to come and invade your life. You need to open your heart this morning. You need to open yourself this morning and just say, Holy Spirit, come in. Come and flood my life. Come and flood my heart. Uh, the question that I want to ask you, are you to such a place in your life where you are so desperate for His presence and His Holy Spirit to come into your life because you know that's the only way you'll survive the season. That's the only way that you'll get through what you need to get through. So I want to encourage each and every one of you to, if you're not on your feet, get to your feet and just open yourself to Jesus, to God, the Holy Spirit, and allow Him to work in you this morning. So I just want us to close our eyes and welcome Him in this morning. So Father, we come, Lord, and we pray. We ask that Your Holy Spirit will come in this all great magnificence, Father, and that it will manifest in great power this morning, Lord. Father, that Your Holy Spirit will sweep us from our feet, Lord, that we will come into Your presence, Father, giving You all the glory and the honor in this morning, that we will hunger and thirst for You, Lord Jesus. Father, as a deer pants for water, so we pant for Your presence, Your Holy Spirit, a great move of God, Father. We come and we just honor You, Lord, in this morning. May the glory and honor go only to you and not to any man, Lord Jesus. So I pray and I ask that you will have your way in this morning, Lord, and that your kingdom will be manifested with power, Lord, that we will receive what you have in store for us, for Jesus. We just glorify your name and we thank you for being here, Lord, and giving us the privilege of gathering here for this, this festival, this feast, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord, and we love you, Jesus. And those who agree, say amen. So I want to invite everyone to the front as we praise and worship. You can stand here in front. Be excited. Praise is expressive in this morning. 
to come onto the front. Let's enjoy the presence of God because it's a festival. It's a joyous time. It's what we are here to do. We are here to dance. We are here to sing. We are here to celebrate Jesus. We are here to celebrate the Holy Spirit, our King. Amen. Oh, come on. Come on, are you expecting this morning? Are you expecting this morning? Hallelujah. Come on, before we start, we just want to invite you to come and dance with us. Amen. Oh, today is a celebration. Today is a celebration. Oh, Lord, we honor you. We praise you this morning. We glorify you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, just the hands. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Hey. So when we praise this morning, I just want you to just quickly look. Put your hands in front of you, amen. You got hands, amen. Can, can your hands do this this morning? Hey, come on. Hey, and quickly look down at your feet. You got feet, right? Amen. Can your feet do this? Oh, wow. Hallelujah. So why don't you put these two together, amen. Come on. We're going to celebrate the King this morning, amen. We're going to glorify Him with our praises. Are you ready? Hey, come on, just give Him a shout of praise. Hallelujah.
just sing it. Come on, glory. Oh, glory and honor and all of the praise. So we sing glory. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Oh, glory and honor and all of the praise. Only to you. Hey. We'll sing till the glory comes to the glory. Till it comes. Here we hear you. Come on. Go we'll dance to the glory. Hey. It comes to the glory. It comes till it comes. Oh, tell. We'll sing till the glory it comes to the glory. Joy in my soul, come what will, come what may, I'll worship anyway. Oh yeah, all the devil, all the devil can try it, I try to quiet this song, but I sing out even louder than before. Are you ready? Let's sing, I'm gonna live. Oh, I'm gonna lift my voice and sing, I'm gonna give him everything. I'm gonna shout until these walls come down. I see the light, I see the light in Jesus' name. I'm gonna laugh all fears away. I'm gonna dance until these lights get loud. One, two, three, let's go! There's a 
joy in my soul. Come what may, come what may, I'll worship anyway. Oh, you're sounding good today. All the devil can try, yeah. Hey. Try to quiet this song, but I sing out even louder than before. Are you ready? I'm gonna live. Oh, I'm gonna lift my voice and sing. I'm gonna give him everything. I'm gonna shout until these walls come down. Oh, I see the light. I see the light in Jesus' name. I'm gonna laugh all oh, fears away. I'm gonna dance until these lights give out. Oh, I'm gonna live. I'm gonna lift my voice and sing. I'm gonna give in everything. I'm gonna show until these walls come down. Oh, I see the light. I see the light in Jesus' name. I'm gonna laugh all fears away. I'm gonna dance until these legs get up. One, two, three, let's go. Are you ready to sing? Let's sing the spirit of joy. Come on. The spirit of joy is breaking out. We can feel it all around. And how we walked in won't be how we leave it. Because yeah. he's doing something new. And we know that he's not through. It's the name of Jesus we believe in. All the spirit of joy, yeah. The spirit of joy is breaking out. And we can feel it all around how we want it won't be how we leave it all is doing something new he's doing something new and we know that he's not through it's the name of jesus we believe it's the name of jesus it's the name of jesus we believe it are you ready you say I'm going to lift my voice and sing. I'm going to give in everything. I'm going to shout until these walls come oh, down. Because I see the light. I see the light in Jesus' name. I'm going to laugh all fears away. I'm going to dance until these legs get proud. Oh, I'm going to live. I'm going to lift my voice. Until these walls go down No, I see the light I see the light in Jesus' name I'm gonna let my fears away I'm gonna dance Until these legs get high. Oh, let's sing the spirit of joy, come on! Yeah! The spirit of joy is breaking out yeah. We can feel it all around How we walked it won't be how we leave it always doing something new he is doing something new and yeah, we know that he's not through it's the name of jesus we believe it all the spirit of joy yeah the spirit of joy is breaking out we can feel it all around how we want it won't be how we leave it Always doing something, and he's doing something new. And yeah, we know that he's not through. And it's the name of Jesus we believe. In. Let's sing, I'm gonna lift, yeah. I'm gonna lift my voice and sing. I'm gonna give him everything. I'm gonna shout until these walls come down. Oh, I see.
there is life in the river of God. There's joy in the river of God. I'm free, I'm free. The Spirit's alive in me. There's life in the river of God. There's joy in the river of God. I'm free, I'm free. The Spirit's alive in me. Oh, let's declare that again. Oh, hey. Cause there's life in the river of God. There's joy in the river of I'm God. I'm free, I'm free, I'm free. The Spirit's alive in me. Oh, some of you don't look free this morning, amen. Come on, hey, hey. Oh, we've got the Spirit of God within us. Oh, He has given us life. He has given us power. This morning, our praise can shift the atmosphere. Hallelujah. Hey, hey. Hey. Whoa. Hey. 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 Oh, oh Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, I'm going to lift my voice to you. Oh, I'm going to lift my voice to you. Oh, I will lift my soul. Oh. Cause we'll sing and then we'll sing a little louder. Oh, oh, we'll dance. Oh, then we'll dance a little louder. Oh, cause there is life in the river of God. There's joy in the river of God. I'm free, I'm free. The Spirit's alive in me. Come on, declare that this morning. Hey, there's life. There's life. In the river of God, there's joy. In the river of God, I'm free, I'm free. The Spirit's alive in me. Let's sing that again. Oh, cause there's life. In the river of God, there's joy. In the river of God, I'm free, I'm free. The Spirit's alive. Oh, yes, he is. Yes, he is. Oh, there's life. In there's joy in the river of God. I'm free, I'm free. The Spirit's alive in me. So we're gonna lift up our voice. Oh. I'm gonna lift my voice and sing. I'm gonna give Him everything. I'm gonna shout until these walls come down. I see the light. I see the light in Jesus' name. I'm gonna laugh all fears hey. away. I'm gonna dance until these legs. I'm gonna lift my voice. Up. I'm gonna lift my voice and sing. I'm gonna give him everything. I'm gonna shout until these walls come down. I see the light. I see the light in Jesus' name. I'm gonna laugh all fears. I'm gonna dance until these legs be I'm gonna dance, I, oh, I'm gonna dance until these legs be high. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, just lift him up this morning. Oh Lord, we praise you. Oh Lord, we praise you. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, hey, yeah. oh. So I'm gonna lift my voice and sing. I'm gonna give him everything. I'm gonna shout until these walls come down. I see the light, I see the light in Jesus' name. I'm gonna let all fears away. I'm gonna dance until these legs give out. Come on, just give him praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Welcome, church. You're welcome to take your seats for the word on offering. And very welcome to our first session of our conference, our outpouring conference. This morning, we're speaking about one accord. So we all made the decision, we came to church, we're in one accord. We already have agreement here. 
So we're going in our Bibles to the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 1. And then while you make your way there, I'll just remind you of the ways of giving. Remember, it's conference, so we have uh, multiple platforms, and I trust everyone came prepared as well. We have Zapper, we have PayPal for our international viewers. We also have envelopes for pledges. We have EFTs, card facilities at the back, and then, of course, the ushers will come by with the buckets if you would like to give cash. So give me a shout if someone's at Acts, in the book of Acts. Amen. So when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. So church, today is not a day like any other day. It's a festival. You came for a celebration today. We celebrate the fact that the gift that was promised to us is the gift that we received. And it's a gift that never stopped being a gift. And for such a gift, how do you respond? You respond with an expression of thankfulness. Because the anointing in the financial realm is generosity. If you want to break the yoke in your finances, generosity is the oil that will anoint that to be broken, that will break that yoke. So now that we've laid the foundation, let's get into the scripture. So our main scripture, we speak about one accord, and this means unanimously. So before the book of Acts, generosity was found only in a few individuals. You had the widow who was gathering sticks um, to prepare a meal for her and her son, and then they would pass away. Then there was Mary, and then, of course, Jesus is our greatest example, showing the ultimate act of generosity. So what changed in the book of Acts? What caused the early church to become generous? We read that they were all in one accord in the beginning of the chapter, and by the end of the chapter, we read a completely um, different type of believer here. We see a shift. So the question is then, what shifted them? So Acts verse two, uh, chapter 2, verse 2, And suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as of a mighty rushing wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Verse 3, And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. Verse 4, And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And after they were filled with the Holy Spirit, they received a boldness. We read of signs, miracles, and wonders being performed by the apostles. And then we skip to verse 43, and then we see the shift. Verse 44, and all, that be- and all that believed to have faith were together and had all things, refers to absolutely all things, in common. Verse 45, and they sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. And then finally, verse 47, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. So the church had all things in common, and there was no lack. It is the unity, church, that commands the blessing, and it is the unity that produces the blessing. Pentecost represents oil. I'll say that again. Pentecost represents oil. I mentioned earlier that one of the most generous givers spoken about in the Bible is the widow who was gathering sticks. She was getting ready to make the last meal for her and her son, and then they would pass away after that because she had nothing. And then we know the story. The prophet came, gave her a word, said to her, go and fill the jars, and we all know how that played out. But before I get to that, interesting how a widow is a woman. It's not a man. It's a woman. (laughs) So we see the oil rests on a woman. The church, the bride of Christ, is a woman. (laughs) So consider what it is that the widow was told to fill. She was told to fill jars vessels of oil we became vessels of oil when for the lord when pentecost came he filled us with oil so it's obedience and giving that activated the blessing so we the church are now the vessel and the blessing is as a result of both our obedience and our giving those two work together and that is why the church in the book of acts lacked nothing So remember, generosity refers to giving. If you cannot give money, then I encourage you to make a pledge. Give a pen, give a hair clip, give a necklace, give something. You are in the presence of the Lord already. We don't have to tell you that the Holy Spirit is here. The Holy Spirit is here. So don't come with nothing. And if you honestly don't have anything, then raise your hand for a pledge, church. I I promise you that the Lord will give seed to the sower. He will not leave you so that that promise is not fulfilled. So all things includes all things. It's not all things, excluding your finances. (laughs) When the Lord says, 
all things, it means your giving as well. So the corporate giving is what will bring the corporate anointing. And we see the end result. The Lord added daily to the church those who were saved. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Amen, church. If you're ready, you're welcome to get to your feet. We're going to ask the Lord to um, bless this festival offering. It's a joyous offering. This should be something that brings joy to your heart, puts a smile on your face. It's not a sad thing. We love to give to the Lord. He gave us everything and everything extra today as well. The Holy Spirit fulfills every need. So you can lift your hands in the air, raise up that offering. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus that we are on one accord, Lord. We are gathered here in your temple, Father. We have come to give glory, Lord. We have come to bring honor, Father. We pray, Lord, that you will receive our sacrifice of giving with a, uh, as a sweet-smelling fragrance, Father. I pray, Lord, that it will move you, Lord. I pray, Father, that every generous giver, Father, will show fruit of it, Lord, that you will um, show mightily in their, or move mightily in their lives, Father. I pray, Lord, that this will not just be a thing to do, Father, but it is a heart's decision, Father. I I pray, Lord, that every giver will um, be blessed in this morning, Lord. Father, we thank you for rebuking the devourer on our behalf, Lord Jesus. And Father, above all else, Lord, we pray that you would add daily to the numbers of this church those who are saved, Father. We pray this in the name of Jesus, Lord. We love you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. And if you agree with me, church, you can give me a shout. Amen and amen. My voice and say, I'm going to give every. Thank you for joining us today. If you would like to give a donation or offering, there are three ways to do so. Via EFT, making use of Zapper, or you are welcome to make use of our card facility at church. Your generosity makes a difference. Oh, yeah. Is this life in the river of God? This joy in the river of God. There's life in the river of God. There's joy in the river of God. I'm free, I'm free. The Spirit's alive in me. Oh, oh we glorify you. Oh, oh, oh. So come and like a fire. Oh, coming like a flood. I don't care. Oh, I don't care what it looks like. I'm so in love. I'm so in love. Won't you come it up? Oh, coming like a fire. Coming like. Oh, coming like a flood. I don't care. And I don't care what it looks like. I'm so in love. I'm so in love. Oh, coming like a fire. Oh, coming like a flood. So we love you can come and come in Oh come in like a fire Oh come in like a flood Cause there is life in the river of
of God, this joy in the river of God. I'm free, I'm free. The Spirit's alive in me. Oh, there is life, there is life in the river of God. There's joy in the river of God. I'm free, I'm free. The Spirit's alive in me. Come on, I just want you to start putting your hands together this morning, amen. Oh, come on. Come on, some of you still look like you are bound up. Some of you don't look like you've received the oil of joy. Some of you still look like you have not yet received the spirit of the living God. Come on. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, there's life. There's joy. Hey, oh, oh. Come shift us, Lord. Come shift us, Lord. Oh. go back into that bridge saying the spirit of joy is coming down amen and we're going to declare it this morning how we walked in is not how we're leaving in this day amen this morning we are going to continue to praise continue to lift up our voices hallelujah hey hey of joy is breaking out we can feel it all around oh, it. how we want it won't be how we leave it oh no he is doing, he is doing something new and we know that he's not through and it's the name of jesus we believe it. oh let's sing that again Spirit of joy is breaking out. We can feel it all around. How we want it won't be how we leave it. Oh, he's doing something new. He is doing something new. Hey. And we know that he's not through. It's the name of Jesus. We oh, let's sing it one more time. Spirit of, the spirit of joy is breaking. Oh, we love you, we love you. 
says, I got the joy, I got the joy, I got the joy. And down in my heart, I got the joy, I got the joy, I got the joy. Oh, down in my heart, I got the joy, I got the joy, I got the joy. And down in my heart, I got the joy, I got the joy, I got the joy. Oh, down in my heart, I got the joy. I got the joy, I got the joy, but down in my heart, I got the joy, I got the joy, I got the joy, but down in my heart, I got the joy, I got the joy, I got the joy, but down in my heart, I got the joy, I got the joy, I got the joy, but down in my heart. Caverns of my soul, come pour in me. 
and let your glory now in the veil. Oh, come and feel, come and feel, Spirit, come and feel this place. Let your glory, let your glory. And let your glory now be veil. Oh, come now, oh, oh, come and fill this place. Oh, let your glory, oh, and let your
my sleep and blow through the caverns of my soul and pour in me to overflow oh spirit of the living god come fall afresh on me come and awake me from my sleep oh, blow through the caverns of my soul and pour in me to overflow oh, oh, oh. cause you're all I want you're all You're all I want I know, I know I know that you are near You're all You're all I want oh, You're all I've Your all I want. Yes, you are. You are. Your all I've ever needed. Your everything. Oh, your all I want. And I know. I know. I know that. Spend a whole week in prayer. 
we spend a whole week in the teachings of the Holy Spirit, there has to be a supernatural thirst. There has to be a supernatural desire. It means that you've come here and you say, God, I don't even worry about people now. I just want you. So this morning, I want you just to have that holy hunger, have that holy desire, have that holy sound that says, I'm crying out to you. I'm pressing in, Lord, because I am thirsty. I'm pressing in, Lord, because I desire. Just cry it out, just cry it out, just cry it out. Come on, just pray, just pray in the Spirit. Just pray in the Spirit, just pray in the Spirit. Come on, I want expectation. There has to be expectation. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, Hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus. Jesus. Honor, all glory, all power unto you. Come on, just cry it out. All honor, all power. Oh, glory unto you, Holy Father, Holy Father, we worship you, precious Jesus, our Savior, Holy Spirit, we wait on Holy Spirit, we wait on Holy Spirit, oh Holy Spirit, we wait on you for fire. For fire. Fire. Oh. Come on, the clearance. 
Oh, our God is a consuming fire. Come on, can we declare it this morning? Can we declare it this morning? Come on. Oh, our God is a consuming fire. 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 desires to be near to us. Hence, we thank you that you've given us your Holy Spirit. We are your temples, O Lord. And we thank you this morning, Lord, as we are reminded of the gift that you gave, that we are ever thankful. And I pray now, Lord, that there will be a greater hunger and a greater expectation for your presence. Let the fire of the Lord fall in this house. And let each one this morning have a hunger, Lord, cannot be contained but by you it cannot be satisfied but by you a first that cannot be quenched but by you and let it be now that expectation that expectation that expectation hallelujah in the name of Jesus let your will be done let your kingdom come this morning right here right now as it is in heaven that is our prayer in the name of Jesus come on can we give God a shout of praise hallelujah can we give God a shout of praise? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, you got to do better than that. Just give Jesus a shout. Lift him up. Lift him up. Lift him up. Lift him up. Oh, you got to just lift him up. Glory, glory, glory. Jesus. Amen, amen. Saints, you may be seated. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So good to be here at our week of outpouring. I said it's so good to be here in our week of outpouring. You gotta wake up this morning, hallelujah. You gotta say, God, I'm expecting, I'm excited, I'm expecting something new. Surely just three people can't be excited. Is there anybody here this morning that's expectant? I trust you are more expectant than my worship team because they were not expectant all this morning. But I want you this morning just to close your eyes quickly and just sit back. And just become aware of the presence of the Lord and welcome the Holy Spirit. This is why we have this conference, is we are reminded of the gift that God has given. We are reminded of the price that was paid. We are reminded of the gift of God, the Holy Spirit. Without Him, this morning is not possible. If He is not here, we might as well go home. We are here because we need Him, and we are reminded this morning, Lord, that we need You, and we are dependent on You. And so we ask You this morning, Holy Spirit, to come, to rest upon every vessel that is here. And may there be in every heart and every mind this morning a hunger for more of You. 
And you might have come here this morning and you're not hungry. You might have come here this morning saying, Lord, I, I didn't come of any hunger, any desire, but I pray now in the name of Jesus that you would realize the importance of the Holy Spirit, that you would place every preconceived idea aside, that you would every every form of how you want it to be done, say, God, I'm a vessel this morning that is open. I am yielded for you. I have a desire for you. I have a hunger for you. I want more of you. Hallelujah. It has to be in you. The Bible says that it is His Word is like fire shut up in my bones. It is something that I cultivate, but there is a fire that we need that we cannot cultivate. There is a fire that comes through desire. There is a fire that comes through expectation. That means that when you sit here this morning, in your soul has to be a cry. There has to be a longing. There has to be that something that says, hey, Lord, if you don't show up, if you don't show up, Lord, then I'm just going to shut up because I I need you. I need more of you. There has to be that hunger, that desire, that pull. Come on. I need somebody this morning that says, God, I want it. Hallelujah. And so as you sit here this morning, just welcome him and say, Lord, I'm thankful that you are here. And make this prayer and say, God, please don't leave me the same yet today. Don't, don't let me leave you today the same way. There has to be something that you do. He said the Holy Spirit doesn't just come upon us and nothing happens. He doesn't just come upon us and there's no visible evidence. He doesn't just come and rest upon us and there is not something that people can see and say, I can see that He is on you. I can see that He has touched you. There has to be something in this vessel that allows the Holy Spirit to express Himself. Glory be to Jesus. And you might be sitting here this morning and you say pastor I don't even know what to do pray in the spirit ask him this morning stir up a bit of that faith and say God I'm not going to come familiar into your presence I'm coming with an expectation I'm coming with a holy hunger hallelujah hallelujah oh but I pray that there be some people here this morning that's hungry that there be some people here this morning say God I want the above and beyond glory be to God so Jesus walks the streets and he calls out 12 people. Say with me, 12. And all throughout his ministry, he does the above and beyond. God does miracles. God does signs. God does wonders. Things that's not been done before, Jesus does. And in some quarters, it creates division. And in some quarters, it creates excitement. And some people decide to leave him. And some people decide to reject him. But the matter of the fact is that this vessel that is now on earth, God manifested in the flesh, is busy causing a stir. He is busy doing something. And we see in the Bible how Jesus then goes. And he now what he does is he reminds his disciples of a promise. A promise that was prophesied by a prophet named Joel. And as he walks, he reminds them of this promise. And this promise creates something in them. He says to them that the very thing that I have, the very one that I possess, the very one that has come upon me that you saw at my baptism in the Jordan, the very one through whom, whose power I am operating, this very promise will be yours. It is to your benefit that I go away. If something's to my benefit, it means I need it. I said, if something's to my benefit, it means I need it. It means God's going to give me something that will enable me to be better off. If God gives me something that enables me to be better off, then i got to do everything possible to make sure I get it. Then i got to look at my life and say, God, did I receive that thing that makes my life better off? How many people here this morning can do with a better off? You understand? And the Bible says, Jesus said, it's a promise. He said, unless I go, the promise that is yours cannot come. And so what happens now is Jesus creates expectation. Jesus creates expectation. And now you have an expectation now. And now they are looking forward to something. Amen. And the question is for you this morning is, did you come with an expectation? Did you have that expectation to say, God, I want that because I know there is a promise. I know there is a gift. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. I want you to go to Acts chapter 1 verse 8. And we're going to start this conference this morning speaking about the following. Say with me, effective. Shout with me, effective. Expectation. 
effective expectation. That means that if we can find effective expectation, then there is also an expectation that is not so effective. It means I expect something, but instead of producing something, it results in nothing. Who's ever had that type of expectation? Or it's an expectation that should, in my opinion, I thought it's going to produce something good, but it didn't produce that. You never had that before. You see, and so what I want to speak to you this morning in this first session of this conference is effective expectation. It's when my expectation results in something. It's when my expectation births something that produces. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Acts chapter 1, 8 and the new NLT says the following, but you shout I. Shout I. The Bible says, but you will receive power. It means God gives something. It means God unlocks something. There is something that Jesus says, I want you to receive. God is not speaking just to an individual here. Jesus now is doing what? He's expressing his desire. He's expressing his desire for his people and he's expressing his desire for his bride. He says, but you will receive power when what happens? Say with me, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And the Bible says, and Jesus went on and he said, and as a result of this, you will be my witnesses telling people about me everywhere. I want you to turn to somebody this morning, look to them in the eyes and tell them, when last did you tell people about Jesus? Not just when last did you hashtag Facebook somebody about Jesus. Not just when last did you wear a t-shirt that says, I love Jesus. Not just, not just that the Bible speaks to you that this word is a word of power. This, this action that Jesus is speaking about here is something that, 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 that implies that there is actually something being done. You actively, purposefully, powerfully went and witnessed about the one called Christ. So what you got to sit here this morning and say, if this is what Jesus gave me, then am I reflecting this? Is this in my life? Hallelujah. Turn again to somebody and say, when last did you actively, purposefully, powerfully witness to someone about Jesus? In the Amplifiers, it says it like this. It says, but you shall receive power. This word power refers to the word ability. It means it gives me an ability that I didn't have. So it's a gift. I give you something which you did not possess. But when my spirit comes upon you, you'll be able to do something that you could not do. I unlock, I give you, I bring you because the Holy Spirit's a gift. I give you the gift of ability. So the very moment, let's not go there now. We'll go there now. But he says the word ability, not just ability, this word then also means efficiency. Say with me, effective. It means that then what you're going to do will be effective. There will be efficiency in the very thing that God desires you then to do. So therefore, if I'm not effective in my witnessing, then something is not right in this baptism or this power, or this thing that I'm busy doing for God. Hallelujah. I have to go look again at why. Because first of all, not only do I need an ability now, because God said that's what I will receive, but I also got to go look at the efficiency of it. Hallelujah. But not only does this word mean efficiency, it means might. That word might refers to something that I cannot possess. I cannot gain it in a gym. Human effort cannot produce this because the Holy Spirit is also known as the spirit of might. So therefore, this might is a power that is above and beyond. It's beyond my ability. And it's a strength that I receive to do something and to fight something and to accomplish something that in my own strength and power I could not do. What you got to do as a church this morning is ask yourself this. Do I have this? And if I say yes, why am I not seeing it? 
quickly ask yourself, close your eyes and think about it. I want you to think. We're going to get into this thing now. I'm just setting you up because I see some guys, you need to just get into the, the flow of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Ask yourself, say, do I have this ability? This, not disability, because some of you do preach like you have a disability. But I mean, is do you have that ability now that the Bible speaks about it? That just above and beyond thing that's a bit different. It means it enables you to efficiently share Jesus. And if you don't, you've got to ask yourself, why don't I do this? What is lacking? What is missing? What is there in my life that is stopping this gift that God gives, that Jesus gives? What is stopping this gift from manifesting? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I said glory be to God. You can open up your eyes. He goes on, he says, you will receive this power, the, the ability, efficiency, and might. When the Holy Spirit has come upon you, now listen to this. He says so that you shall be my witnesses. That word witnesses. And we're going to get into this now. I'm just setting you up. But that word has got two things there. When you read some translations, some translation says that you will be my effective witnesses. Which means not just to witness. It means that when you witness, your witnessing is effective. Hallelujah. And not just that, this word also means something else. The word witness actually means, he says the following, he says, you will become my effective martyrs. Jesus was saying, when the Holy Spirit has come, you will tell everybody about me and you'll become my effective martyrs, which means you will effectively die for me. Which means I'm laying down my life. Now that says to me why so many people didn't want to go to the upper room. Some of you are not catching this. Some of you are not catching this. Don't worry, I'll take you there. But the good news is we are in the time and the age of the Holy Spirit. And the good news is that we all can receive Him. And the good news is that we all can witness effectively about Jesus. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. The sad part is, is that when we reject this gift, we reject a gift from Jesus. When we sit in the church and God says, I want to do something for you. And you say, I don't want to receive that. I'm not going to come out for prayer. I don't want this. You are effectively in the presence of Jesus denying a gift from Him. Who's ever had a gift rejected? Just one person. Okay, so you guys never had a gift. Is there anybody who had a gift rejected? Come on, you've got to wake up this morning. And how did it feel? How did it feel when you gave somebody something and they didn't want it? And when I say not want, I'm not saying you bought the wrong gift. Because in your human effort, you can make that mistake. God never gives us the wrong gift. He'll give you preci exactly, precisely what you need. So who's ever given the perfect gift, but the person's attitude and ungratefulness rejected it? That's what you actually should be seeing, Leah. It's not like you brought somebody a rugby ball, but he's a cricket fan. You can understand that they'd reject that gift. Because I don't wonder, uh, what do I want to do with this thing? I don't even know how to kick it. What happens is Jesus brings the perfect gift. He knows you. He knows what you need. He knows what you got to do for him. So he gives you a perfect gift. He gives you someone. Hallelujah. And, and can you now imagine, the Bible says, who baptizes us with the Holy Spirit? Therefore, who brings the gift? Therefore, who do we reject? So we come to a conference which is called Pentecost. We say, God, I'm coming to this conference, but we come and we look like it's a funeral. We come with no hunger. We come with no expectation. We come with no desire. There is no, there is no eagerness. There is no thankfulness. And then we knowingly come so, knowingly that Jesus, the Bible says that he baptizes us, knowingly we come in here and then we reject. Why? Because our hearts are not here. He says, they worship me with their lips, but their hearts are not there. But you know what, church, here's the thing. It was not only us. There were people even in Jesus' day who did this, and he was physically there. Which then brings up the question as to why. Can we get into this this morning? Shall it be effective? Effective, effective expectation. Now, I'm not going to go here this morning and preach the fear of the Lord, but I think for some I should. 
But I do want you this morning to sit here with a hunger and you're saying, God, on this Pentecost day, in this day of promise and this day of gifting, I've got to look at a couple of things. Amen. Before we get into this conference, you've got to make sure that you are ready to receive and you are ready for the Lord. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 2 verse 1. Go with me to Acts chapter 2 verse 1. I'm just setting the stage. I'm just setting the stage because I want you to be ready to receive what God wants to give you this morning. There's going to be two groups of people in this church this morning and those of you that's even watching and some of you are going to walk out here and you're going to walk on air and some of you are going to walk out here and you don't even know you're breathing air. Number one is this. Acts chapter 2 verse 1 says this. On the day of Pentecost, all believers were meeting together in one place. And suddenly, there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm. When you hear the word suddenly, you think they didn't expect it. It's not so. It's not so. They were Jews. They knew about the festival they knew about the festival of Pentecost. It was not like they did not know what festival they're going to enter in now. You see, the outpour of the Holy Spirit didn't just happen on a random day. It was on a festival. It's still one of God's feasts. Hence, why you come to a conference like today, you can't come looking like the Grim Reaper. You should look like somebody that's attending a festival. Yeah, there's something I'll never intend to bring you to one of my parties. Passion killers just come and looking like that. I'm like, come on, we're going to have a festival. You're like, uh. no, it's a festival. It's still a Jewish feast. They knew that. Not just that, they knew about the promise. Hence, hence, Jesus said, if I don't leave, I can give. So he leaves. They know now that he's going to give. This suddenly might have, been, might, have, might have been for some people unexpected, but not for the guys in the upper room. The guys in the upper room had a holy expectation, a holy hunger knowing that on this festival day, something's going to happen. To them, it wasn't suddenly. To them, it was just coming to me what God said would come to me. So it wasn't unexpected, it was expected. Hallelujah. Suddenly there was a sound from heaven like a roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. And then what looked like tongues or flames of tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit did what? Gave them this ability. You gotta sit here and say, God, I want this. You see, currently in the church, our hunger for natural things are outweighing our hunger for spiritual things. And when our hunger for the natural outweighs our hunger for the supernatural, then we expect spectacular. And spectacular doesn't come as a result of faith, spectacular gives me faith. But the supernatural works as a result of faith. You see, we want, we want it differently. We, we say, God, if I see it, I believe it. Why? I'm natural orientated. I want spectacular things to happen. But what should happen is we should come with a supernatural expectation. And that moves God to manifest. Hallelujah. That's why when you come here this morning, you're going to say, God, in this, in this time... Why, where, where, where am I finding myself? Natural or supernatural? Do I, this, do I seek manifestation or the spectacular? This is why the cheat, the, the cheat, oh geez. This is why the church so easily gets bored. Because if you desire the spectacular, that means every service has to outperform the previous one. Every conference has to outperform the previous one because you want spectacular. But when it's supernatural, it's different. Because God is God. And, and, the, and, and if I have God, I'm satisfied. If I have His presence, I'm satisfied. Hallelujah. You see, because that is the supernatural side of it. Not the spectacular. Glory be to Jesus. Now, listen. Whenever there is the promise of a gift, it will always create expectation whenever there is the promise of a gift it will always create 
expectation. Who has ever been excited about a gift? If you're not lifting up your hand, the person next to that guy, pray for them. Because I have always been excited about a gift. If I know something's coming and I heard this thing is going to do great things, I'm like, yeah, I want this. So who has ever had an expectation for a gift? So wherever there's a promise, and this is what Jesus now does. He says, I'm going away and I'm going to give you something. I'm going to give you something and oh, ho, oh, oh. ho. But here's the sad part. If, if the promise of a gift creates expectation, here's the problem. Unless the gift that is promised is not desired, it will not breed expectation. A gift can only bring expectation if the gift is desired. If the gift is not desired, expectation will be lacking. Hence, if you came to the conference and you were overfilled of joy and excitement, there was a desire. What was there? There was an effective expectation. When I came here and people had to convince me that the gift is what you need, it is not something I desire. It is something I will tolerate. And God does not go where he's tolerated. God goes where he's celebrated. Hence, when I sit here this morning, I got to sit here with a holy expectation to say, God, I so desire you. In this time and in this atmosphere, this is what I want. This is what I desire. I want you more than the air that I breathe. I am so excited. I'm so excited. Turn to him and say, tell your face you're excited. And you know what? Pentecost is exactly that. To these guys now walking with Jesus, these guys now fellowshipping with Jesus, he reminds them that he's going away. He reminds them that he's bringing them a gift. And now what happens now is Pentecost is not just anymore a day. Pentecost is not just a festival now anymore to them. Pentecost now, they now know, will be then the fulfilling of the gift that Jesus had promised them. There was this expectation that was cultivated in them, and now finally it's the day. Now finally that time has come, that this very thing that Jesus said that he's going to give me is now here. And now they got that hunger. And now they got that expectation. But yet you still have people that just didn't pitch. So you got both sides of the coin. You got these 120 guys. Jesus speaking about his gift. He says it's going to come. It's a fulfillment of something that's going to I'll release that word now. And you got these 120 guys. They run to the upper room. They're so excited. They spend time in prayer. And they're like, yes, it's going to be happening now. We can't wait for this to happen. But you got other people just say, we're not, just in, we're not interested. And you're going to ask yourself this morning, which am I? You might be present, but it doesn't mean you're expected. Say with me, Pentecost is not over yet. You see, as long as the church remains on this earth, it is still the feast of Pentecost. That means that the Holy Spirit's gift is still freely available for us. That should excite the living daylights out of you. You should be sitting here and saying, God, if this thing is still possible for me, then I want it now. If this gift is something I can still receive, I want it now. If this excited them so much, I want it now. I want the fire. I want the Holy Spirit. I want that baptism. I want people to look at me and say, hallelujah, something's different. Hallelujah. What was Pentecost? Pentecost was the manifestation of the expectation. But it wasn't just the manifestation of the expectation. You have to understand, if Pentecost was only the manifestation of the expectation of the people, 
it might not have looked like we wanted it to look. Pentecost was not the expectation of the people so much as it was the expectation of Jesus. It was Jesus' expectation of His church. He wanted His church to look like a woman on fire. He wanted His bride to operate with the same power and function and ability as He did. He wanted His bride to be in a certain condition. He wanted her to walk with power, authority, might, and ability. So that expectation on Pentecost was the fulfillment of the expectation of Jesus. When we are no longer expectant of Pentecost and we don't have an expectation for the Spirit, then we are not aligned with Christ's expectation for us. It would like be like two people getting married. And the woman is like, ah, doch. Let me just put makeup on for him. I don't want to be here, so just get it over with. Let's get married so I can carry on with my life. It's exactly that. So I don't have a desire for this. You see, we, we have to understand that when a bride gets married, her expectation should be, I want, I want to look like He wants me to look like. I want to be beautiful for Him. I want to be holy for Him. I want to meet His expectations. Because if the bride goes and she beautifies herself for herself, she wants a wedding day. She doesn't want a marriage. For her, then it's about the pictures, the cameras, and the people. It's not about the one who she's about to surrender her life to. And Jesus comes and he looks at his disciples and he says, disciples, guys, I'm giving you a promise. And he stirs up that expectation. But not everybody has it. And not everybody desires it. And not everybody comes and therefore not everybody has effectiveness about them. Hence, there are people in the church that's not so effective as they could be because they don't have the expectation that I should have. And so when we come to a conference like today, we should sit and say, God, not only is this a joyous occasion, it is I'm coming here and I want to express my thankfulness. I want to express my thankfulness because you made me into the woman you desire. You made me into the body you desire. You made me, you gave me a gift that I can express thankfulness towards. How, how thankful are we today that God gave us the Spirit of God? That's not very thankful. The Bible says, when the Holy Spirit came upon it, there was a visible expression. And I will share something with you tonight how that visible expression should look like. We'll speak about it at the session two. Write this down. Pentecost activates the church for effective service. Pentecost activates the church for effective service. Pentecost allowed the church to do what? To function as Christ. When Pentecost came, now all of a sudden a group of ordinary men can do extraordinary things. It enabled us now to serve effectively. It enabled us now to do the very things that Jesus, can you expect, can you, can you just imagine the excitement of these guys? And I'm going to show you the prophecy as to why they were so excited and as to why they endured and as to why even the word martyr, you have to understand Peter wasn't even, he didn't even want to be associated with Jesus at the cross. Now Jesus says, you're going to die for me. And he says, I can't wait for that day to come. You have to understand the magnitude and the significance of God's Spirit being given to us that 12 men would leave Jesus all alone when He was about to die. Yet a couple of days later, they say, you meaning I'm going to be a martyr? I'll do it for you. I'll die for you. You see, there had to be that promise now. And all of a sudden, yes, these guys, and they're hearing what Jesus is telling them because they saw what he did. They knew what he endured. They know what he went through. And they could see what the Holy Spirit was now busy doing in his life. So Pentecost activates the church not only for active service. It doesn't just only allow us to function as Christ. But the promise of this creates also something in us. It creates effectivity. 
It creates in us an expectation now that's going to produce something. Amen. I said amen. Now, do I have your attention this morning? Are you a little bit excited this morning? Now, let's just look at this. Five things that then, that Pentecost, or the power of God then releases on the church when it comes to Pentecost. Number one is this. There's six things. I, wanna, I wanted to say five, but I, I feel I have to say six things. So let's just go quickly into this. Number one, it released effective power. Effective power means it's power that accomplishes, it gets things done. Pentecost released that on the church. What else? It released effective presentation. What does this mean, Pastor? It means now when I preach the gospel, it produces desired results. Effective presentation. That's witnessing. I can effectively now present Christ. I can be powerful about it. Hallelujah. Number one. Say with me, number one. Effective power. Number two. Effective presentation. Number three, what it also did is effective love. There are some people who love, but your love lacks power because your love is not God. The Bible says that God is love, and you know what's happened now? You've been immersed by God. And when I get immersed in God and His love can work through me, my love is effective because the Bible says there's power in that love. Hallelujah. And that this love can conquer all things. If my love is a conquering love, then my love is an effective love. That means that we can have a love that's not effective and a love that is effective. Hallelujah. When I am immersed in God, my love is effective. Hallelujah. Are you with me this morning? The fourth thing that it does is also it produces in us effective persistence. Now you have people that not only seize danger, but they run towards it and they endure it. You see, the church gets the church gets empowered by the Holy Spirit, and it was not like every door opened. It was not like everybody just said, "Come in and preach the gospel." It was not like the government of that day just said, "Well, I guess the church is here. We better take a step back." And the spirit of religion and the religious leaders just said, "Well, I guess that prophecy has came to all. I guess this happened, so we just will sit back and say nothing." No, the Bible says all throughout the Book of Acts, you can go read. They they endured persecution, and many of them died. What gives me the ability to know, not only know that I will die, but then also to endure that? When Stephen was preaching the gospel with effective power, effective presentation, effective love, they were stoning him. They were killing him with rocks. And while they were killing, you got to understand physical rocks. You can't even like it when people still call you fat. Or they don't greet you at church or they sit in your chair and then you're like, oh, I don't want to be here anymore and the church doesn't like me and the church does. These guys effectively endured. The Bible says even as they were killing him, he said, God, forgive them. They don't even know what they're doing. But we take offense when we don't get used and things don't go our way and people mispronounce our names and pastor forgot to greet me at the door. But the Bible says as he was busy dying, he said, and that effective love came upon him. That effectivity stepped in and he said, God, forgive them. Forgive them because I can discern that they don't even know what they are doing. Hallelujah. When the Holy Spirit comes upon me, there are areas in my life that gets effective. Glory be to God. I can do more. And so he endured that. He endured that. Why? That God can be glorified. The whole book of Acts is just endurance. If you look at the life of the Apostle Paul, he endured many hardships. He endured many hardships. If you look at the life of John, he endured many hardships. Every disciple, every apostle went through severe persecution, and most of them were martyred. Glory be to God. Even today, as you are sitting here, very comfortable on your chair, very comfortable in your air conditioner, very comfortable with your warm clothes, there are people today dying for Jesus. At this moment, they are saying, chop off my head. At this moment, they are saying, put me in prison. At this moment, they are saying, shoot me, because I will lay down my life 
for Jesus. Glory be to God. What gives them this ability? What makes them, what enables them to say that you can put a gun to my head and I will die? I've got no problem. What enables them to say that I will endure having no food and maybe just have a bit of water and sleep on a hard ground? If it's for His glory, I will. What enables somebody to pray for His enemies and pray for those who persecute them? What enables somebody, hallelujah, to say, chop off my head as long as He gets the glory? We want to be upset if I don't have the right boyfriend and if this didn't happen and that this had happened. But there is something that comes upon somebody and makes them effective in whatever they do for God. I say this to the church. You're going to sit here and say, God, I desire this. Hallelujah. Effective persistence. That ability to persevere. We get a job and we don't like the job and we quit. We get into a marriage, we don't like the marriage, we quit. We get into a business, whatever, whatever it is, we give up too easily. We lack that effective persistence. That's why we lack the Holy Spirit. If you look at the church, they have effectively persevered. Say with me number five. Are you going to like this one a lot, especially all those people with the religious spirits? Effective finances. When you look at the church of Acts, the Bible said that all things in common, nobody lacked and everybody was joyful. It tells me that the Holy Spirit allows us to do what? Prosper. Then why would some in the church not prosper? The same way as some in the church would not love and not forgive. For the same reason as somebody in the church would not endure hardships. For the same reason as somebody in the church would not walk in the power of God. Because the one that they need to get this done is the one they reject through sin, selfish desire, and idolatry. If he is the key to making us function effectively, then we got to study the Holy Spirit and make sure that if he's the one that gives me this ability, that, that, that enables me to be effective, then i got to make sure that I understand how he works and what he likes because he is what I need. Now you understand what a joyful day it is today to celebrate something. Because what happens now is God gives me ability to do things that I could not do on my own. Couldn't do it on your own. Hallelujah. Number six. Number six. He gives me the ability to be effective in prayer. Effective and prayer. There is something that the Holy Spirit does for me that makes my prayers effective. You see, when the Pharisees stood in the corner and they prayed, God ignored that prayer. It wasn't even a prayer. Jesus like, he he didn't please him. But the Holy Spirit does, when He comes upon me, He allows me to know the will of my Father. And not just that, we'll get into this now, but just, just shout with me effective prayer. I find myself this morning in two roads. In the one hand, I want to teach. In the one hand, I want to shout. So I, I got to figure out which one is going to be the best for you. But I do pray even as you sit here now, already in you, there's that expectation starting to awaken now. But not just that. I pray even there's a conviction coming upon you that say, Lord, how did I dare come into this conference not hungry? How did I dare not appreciate the very one that you give as a gift? How did I dare come in here with familiarity as if you are just something? No, you are a gift of God, Holy Spirit, and you are God. And I desire you because I know I need you. Hallelujah. And on this festival and on this day to be celebrated as a church, I thank you, Jesus, that you are here. Because the Bible says that he baptizes us and his desire is that you would be baptized. He's got an expectation for you. That means do your expectation match up with his. Ask yourself that in this day, in this moment, in this hour, right here, right now, does my expectation meet up with the expectation of Jesus. His expectation is to baptize you. His expectation is that you would look different, that you would act different, that you would have ability that others do not possess. Does your expectation matches His? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That has to be there right here, right now. That conscious, that hunger, that desire, that, that ability to perceive the presence of God. Say with me, expectation breeds Effectivity. When people are expectant, it shifts them. You put two people here in the front, 
One is expectant for the presence, the other is not. I'll show you how they worship, they praise, their prayers, their giving, their demeanor, their serving. Everything will, will be different. Everything will be different. The one is an expectation which produces effectivity. The other one is just an expectation. For this thing to be over. Hallelujah. If expectation, it creates the atmosphere for effectiveness. It creates the atmosphere for effectiveness. Why? Because the one that comes when I create the atmosphere enables me to be effective. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. And so when I have the atmosphere of God, results will follow. I said results will follow. So what does effective expectation do? It sets us up to become effective. Expectation sets you up. It sets you up. That's why familiarity will rob you of the anointing. It will rob you of the presence. It is a thief. And people who are familiar are people with no expectation. It's like they come to church and they say, I've seen it all, I've done it all, I believe it all, yet the Bible says the angels in heaven regularly, every second cries out, holy, 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 because God is just too big. They see a new side of Him every moment. And yet we have become comfortable of this God that we serve, who created us, who's given us His Spirit, hallelujah. You know, as I was ministering last week, and this thing hit me, and I don't know how many people it hit, but it hit me. What leader who has possession of something would share that power with someone who doesn't even really want it? God shares power. How You have to understand, He shares it. I mean, if, if you watch movies, everybody wants power, but they don't want to share it. The God that we serve loves you so much. He hires you in such high regard that He says, what I have, I want you to share. How awesome is that? The God would be you today, that Jesus would be today to say, I want to share what I have with you. Hallelujah. Isn't that beautiful? I said, isn't that beautiful? Glory be to God. If Pentecost creates expectation, then we have to look at the other side as well. What it also does is, there's another side of it. Jesus spoke about two baptisms. There's another thing that Pentecost does, and we saw it at Pentecost. Say with me, Pentecost also represents the fire baptism of God. Look to your neighbor and look them in the eyes. Say, Pentecost will expose. Pentecost will expose. You see, Jesus now goes, and for 40 days, However long it was, but more or less 40 days, he, he preaches about the kingdom. He stirs up this excitement, this expectation. He spares the promise. He does great miracles. He proves to those that was there with him that it is him. He is resurrected from the dead. There's no, there's no way to deny that this is the Christ that died and was resurrected. There's not that holy hunger, that holy excitement. Yet the Bible says, when you just look at Scripture, at least in that moment... When he said to go ex- for the expectation of that promise, at least 380 people said no. At least 300 people sat there, with, like some people in the church, they with their arms crossed. Not wanting to believe, not wanting to accept, not wanting to yield, not wanting to experience. And what happened now is that moment of Pentecost exposed them. 
it revealed their hearts. The fire of God will reveal your heart. It will reveal your inner being. It will expose the motive. Pentecost is a motive exposer. When Simon the sorcerer came and he desired the power, the apostle Peter rebuked him. He said, you do not have the right motive. And so what the festival of Pentecost does, this Holy Spirit outpouring is it unveils hearts. It now all of a sudden reveals the passion that you claim you have, you really have. It all of a sudden now exposes, are you willing to be endeared to receive the gift? It all of a sudden exposes, do you really want what God gives or is it just an exercise for you? And some people might even be sitting here this morning and at this very moment, the atmosphere of you find yourself in is exposing your heart's condition. Say with me, Pentecost exposes wrong motives. You know what it does? It separates two crowds. It's the crowd of what God can do for me and God can do through me. There are some that only come to church because they want God to do something for them. Bless me, Lord. Give me money, Lord. Heal this, Lord. Do this, Lord. But these groups here, you have to understand, we're going to go a little bit deeper now. You had now people here that didn't want God to do something so much for them as through them. So they had that excitement now that just as the Holy Spirit did things through Jesus, this very thing can now become my portion. So I want God more now to do things through me than something for me. Why? Because His cross was enough for me. So it exposes two hearts, exposes two mindsets. And that's why you'll always have these two types of people in church. The one who only, that ever want is God do something for me. God do something for me. And then the other one that says, God, I want to do something for you. I want to do something for you. I want to do something for you. Hallelujah. It's different. I said it's different. And when you have this different mindset, it, everything about you is different. Glory be to Jesus. That's why Pentecost is such an exposure of hearts, such an exposure of motive and intent. And when I come here this morning, I got to sit in this conference and say, God, before I go any further, before I receive anything, I got to understand now. Expose my heart with your fire. I got to make sure that it's not just what can you do for me. Lord, I now want to do something for you. got now people here. You have to understand the climate. I was thinking about this early in the morning hours. And I understand why some people didn't go to the upper room. Because you have to understand the day and the climate of those people. For so many years now, and especially at that moment now, the Jews are oppressed. They are under the impression, this is their expectation, there's going to come a person that's going to overthrow the government and we're going to have a new earthly kingdom and we're going to rule and reign. He's going to come and help me out of my situation. And here comes Jesus, and they had the expectation, but his expectation was not their expectation, and their expectation was not his expectation. And here comes Jesus, and he does something totally different, and bam, expectation not met. For some it's met, because now they know they can inherit salvation. But for the majority, expectation not made. Who has ever had such an expectation only for it not just not to be met? And Jesus doesn't mean expectation. And all of a sudden, these guys are like, oh, but that's not what we wanted. He, we were thinking earthly kingdom. We were thinking you're not going to come and chop off the head of the king of, of the Roman and we're going to now have Jerusalem all to ourselves. But God's plans are not our plans. And what God does is not always what we want, but it's definitely what we need. And here you've got a group of people now whose expectation should be the promise, but it's not. They don't even remember at this very moment the promise. At this very moment, they couldn't care less because they have a need. There are some people coming to church, God will move, and they say, I don't care what God's doing now. I have needs. So I don't care in the worship if something happens, I have needs. I don't care if somebody gets, I have needs. Lord, this is not what I wanted now. 
God says, I don't do what you want, I do what you need. So God moves because the expectation was wrong. The expectation was wrong. God had something different in store. So Jesus comes and there's this first disappointment. It's that first disappointment now. You see, and now Jesus goes now and he speaks for 40 days about a kingdom that does not meet their expectation. Doesn't meet their desire. Doesn't look like they, you see, some people come to church with their preconceived ideas. I come into church, I've drawn my block, and God has to be somewhere in this block, or otherwise I'm not going to receive this. But God doesn't work in boxes. He does something new. He does something different. And now at the end of this 40 days, after telling and teaching and showing them something totally, completely different, he then says, remember, there's another promise that I'm coming, that I'm giving, something else. And one group is like, whoa, more. Oh, Lord, we got expectation. And the other group is like, we dis- we've been disappointed once. And after what we just said, we're not so sure if that's our expectation. leaves them ineffective, ineffective. It leaves them now the place where they cannot be, look like, or be even desire the very one or the very thing that God's going to give. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. It didn't meet their expectation. You know what it didn't do? It didn't meet their selfish requirement. Because God's expectation will always be for the benefit of of all if he blesses you it's for the benefit of the body it's not for the benefit of the individual the individual gets to profit from it he gets to say thank you God it's done but look at what Jesus said to Mary and them when he healed Lazarus he said this was done to glorify my father in heaven this wasn't even done he didn't say I did this for Mary and her sister he didn't even say I did this so that the family could, could stop crying and they couldn't be blessed. He said, the only reason I did this is for the Father can be glorified. Effective. Because now this miracle reaches more. This miracle will accomplish more. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Expectation. What is your expectation? Where do you find yourself? The ones who will come, the ones who will withdraw. The ones who want, the ones who don't really want. The ones who have the desire or the ones who do not glory. Because you see, some people don't want the Holy Spirit. Really. Because they now know then, I'm already having an issue of being an hour at church every week. Now he wants me two hours at church. Because when the Spirit of God comes upon us, it's a productivity. And that means that somewhere in my life, something's going to have to die. Hence, you will become effective martyrs. And Christians don't like that because you gotta, you're got you telling me I have to die. The rich man also came to Jesus with an expectation until Jesus said, that's not effective. Sell everything you have. Come to me. I'll show you what effectivity is. The Bible says he left sad. And that is why when, when we had that Holy Spirit moving, moving and, and, and the, the, the earth was more giving and loving. Remember the Bible says the closer we come to the end, the more selfish we will become. That's why you struggle to get people in church. That's why you struggle to get people to celebrate feasts and all that stuff. Why? Because it's my agenda now. It's now revolving around me. And it's not a famous message to tell people, give up more of your time for God. So they give it names just to feel better. Oh, Pastor Divan doesn't understand. Hey, Pastor Divan didn't ask you. And I want to say something this morning. I might have said a couple of people, so then let me say it. Jesus says, I got two gifts for you. I give you the Holy Spirit, and I give you my pastor. If you reject the Spirit, you're going to reject also His representative. And if you reject His representative, you're also going to reject the Spirit. He says, I give the church these gifts. Gifts of the Holy Spirit is not the gifts of Jesus. That's the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory be to God. These guys had selfish individual expectations. And now Jesus comes and speaks about something else. 
And not just that, you can understand that these guys have got an expectation for something else. And then he says, and just so by the way, uh, I know that you didn't expect me to bring a spiritual kingdom, but you'll have to die for me as well. Bum, bum, bum. And I was like, <laughs> talk about a curveball. That's <laughs> if the first expectation is not met, then this one's definitely not met. You see, because what happens now is when I don't have the expectation of Christ, I don't also have the vision of Christ. Which means the things that God sees as important, I don't even have sight of. I don't even have sight of. I'm going to show you in the Bible now. Because what Jesus was actually saying here, and the 120 perceived that they knew this, is he was actually bringing to fulfillment a promise that was promised by the prophet Joel through the prophets. It was now being the fulfillment of prophecy. But they were so self-wrapped in their own lives and their own agendas and what they wanted God to do that they missed out completely on the bigger picture. Because they didn't have effective expectation. They didn't have effective expectation. That's why God, the Bible says, you ask and you do not have. Because when you ask, you ask with the wrong motive. When I can see what Jesus sees, and when I ask Him and He gives it, and I have the right expectation, then it will flow. It will come. And it will happen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So yeah, what happens now is the second expectation is not met. Now the Holy Spirit gets poured out. Let's go to Joel. Go to the Joel chapter 2. Because in this group now of people were those who remembered what God said. They could see what God sees. They could now all of a sudden realize that now is going to be that time that that promise that was given to people will now come to pass and that creates expectation. It was different now. They now knew it's going to place them in a different category because all of a sudden now this expectation in them is like this will be fulfilled. Which means I am going to look different. But it will not then be for myself. It will be for all. Joel chapter 2, 28. Here is now what they knew was going to happen to them. And we are still living in this day. We are still living in this day. Yet there are people today in church who still find them in two groups. Those with effective expectation and those with none. Why? Because those ones with selfish desire does not walk in the promise because they don't desire it. They come to church to become familiar and desire these things. But there are a group of people that says, God, it's still, it's still this time. Look what the Bible says. The Bible says, Joel chapter 2, 28, and the NLT says this. Then after doing all those things, listen to what he says. Here's the promise. I will. If God said He will, I'll tell you one thing, He will. He says, I will pour out my Spirit upon selected people. He says, I will now pour out my Spirit on all people. Now wait a second before you get excited. Let me just color the picture in for that you understand. At that moment, the Spirit was not given to all people not everybody was allowed to have the spirit it was only the anointed ones the prophets and in david's case the kings or the kings and the prophets let's say and the priests they all had measures of god's spirit so you and i let's say i wasn't i wasn't a, a, a king priest or a prophet just a guy there in judah praising or a guy there in benjamin doing whatever just building woods and and making tents and uh, feeding sheep yeah, just as the regular you know, day-to-day things. We, we, we couldn't have this. It was not for us. So God goes down and says, there's going to come a time and day where every one of you. Who's ever been curious? 
Come on, women, lift up your hand. All the, all the women in here, lift up. I'll say, I'll say this to you. This is now me, because I'm also curious. I would have looked at that high priest. You know, that one guy who could have gone one time in a year into a certain place that nobody could have seen. And if they went in there and did it wrong, they died. I would have really, 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 really wanted to go into that place and see what's it all about. I wouldn't just take that guy's word for it. I was like, yeah, that's great. I'm happy for the blood you shed and, and the bee and the cows you killed and what all the stuff. That, but I want to see that. I want to see those two angels with that presence and that flame and that glory. And that, you know, I, I, wanted, I wanted to see that. But one guy was able to do that. And God now goes to a whole people. He says, you know what I'm going to do? I am going to pour out my spirit that was only given to one guy on everybody. And now everybody can become a holy place where I dwell. That should create excitement. That should create holy expectation. That should create effective expectation. Now all of a sudden, these things take place because now Peter and James and John and all these guys that are standing there and they've heard about the Holy Spirit and they can see this is now really going to happen on this feast. Glory be to God. Now all of a sudden, they can see themselves doing what Jesus did. For three years of their life, they saw this man do things that people can only dream of. They saw him spit and make mud and heal blind eyes. They saw him take a guy that couldn't reach a bath that was stirred. All of a sudden, tell somebody, pick up your things and walk. They saw somebody that withstood the religious people that they looked at him when he taught and they said where does this guy even come from they saw somebody that had fights with satan they saw somebody that went into water and the father spoke from heaven they saw somebody that validated their son from heaven they saw somebody that could do the above and the beyond they saw somebody who could die and be resurrected not just people but he himself and all of a sudden is an expectation an expectation of a promise an expectation of a promise you mean to tell me Jesus that the spirit that raised you from the dead is a spirit now that I can also have oh I expect this thing hallelujah and now what happens is people are expecting there's this desire there's this hunger there's this eagerness now to say if jesus has it i want it and if he can do it i can do it so let us go to that place that he said we should wait because we want the promise he said i'll pour my spirit on all people and then things will happen to them because you go read the rest of that scripture so they went to that upper room with expectation. Not the expectation of, what am I going to get? It's now the expectation of, what am I going to do? It's now, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It's now God enables me to do everything. Hallelujah. The price doesn't even matter. The price doesn't even matter because I get the opportunity to do what Christ did. The church has become spoiled and fat and familiar. We have become accustomed and familiar with the presence of God. We've become accustomed and familiar with the gifts of Jesus. We have come to a place where we no longer value or desire or have expectation. Yet here was a group of people that showed us that even when Jesus was there, there was people who came familiar or became familiar don't think that you can never do it because here was people they saw him the bible says that after his resurrection with infallible proofs he proved to everybody that i am the christ that i have risen from the dead it was not like he stood there and read a poem and some people had the option of not seeing or maybe doubting the bible says with infallible proofs he showed everybody there that i am the resurrected here is the holes in my hands and the holes in my 
legs and he walked there with a glorified body doing the above and beyond speaking of a kingdom that is not on this earth but supposed to be manifested on this earth hallelujah the church has become familiar and now you have these people they see all these things and Jesus says go to the upper room and I will give you what I have I will give you that promise I will spit upon you that promise and there are still people who said I don't want it so God says we're living in that day where it's the day of promise. It's the day of outpouring. I have not yet removed my spirit. I have not yet removed my church. I have a desire for her. I have an expectation for her. This is the day of expectation. This is the hour of desire that you're going to say, God, I want it. And yet people come to church and they don't want to serve. They don't want to desire. They don't want to passionately praise. They don't want to worship. We become familiar. And God says, I have an expectation of you. It's not your expectation. It's it's my expectation. I don't care what you want. It's what I want because you are mine. I want you to die for me. I want you to live for me. I want you to go and be effective for me. And something in you today is going to say, God, I missed it. I missed this completely. I thought it's all about me. But Jesus says it's not about you. It's about me. Hallelujah. And we're going to come today back to the place where we say, God, forgive me for being familiar. Forgive me for getting comfortable. Forgive me for seeing it just a day. It's not a day. God, the Holy Spirit says, I abide with you. I'm going to rest upon you and we're going to do great things. Can somebody give God a shout of praise? This is why some people give up so easily. Especially when they face adversity. You want to know why? Because their expectation is of a promise for them. And that expectation, church, is very small. Which means the devil can defeat that expectation. But when my expectation becomes God, the Bible says... The enemy cannot resist him. The enemy cannot overcome him. The enemy cannot defeat him. When my expectation aligns with Jesus, there is nothing Satan will do to stop you. There is nothing Satan will do to hinder you. There is nothing Satan will do to stop the will of God through an expectation. Through an expectation that is effective to come to pass in the body. You see, when you being stopped, when you being disappointed, it's because you said, God, do it for me. But hundred. 20 people showed us how they said God don't do it for me do it for us do it for you do it that you may get the glory you gotta broaden the expectation you gotta broaden the desire so that even the devil will look at it and say I cannot 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 overcome this because he that's in me is greater than he that's in the world and in me now has to be that desire that's oh my god i can feel the anointing in this house the holy spirit is available the holy spirit wants to rest upon you god wants to use you god wants to send you god wants to do something that's above and beyond and you're gonna say god take away this small picture and give me a bigger one take away this small desire and give me a bigger one can somebody shout praise to God oh oh glory be to Jesus you see the moment that's when fear comes in fear can threaten your small thing but it cannot threaten God's big thing so when the church becomes carnal and selfish Satan thrives but when the church dies and allows Christ to live He has to run. He has to run because he cannot defeat the Christ. The victory has already been, the victory has already been achieved. Jesus is the victor. And he has given me his spirit. And you have purpose. And he gives us his spirit to do great things. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. 
And so when we come to a conference like today, on this day, we say, God, thank you that you chose today to give me your spirit. Thank you that you chose a day like today to broaden my imagination, to give me a holy expectation, an effectiveness, an efficiency, Lord, that will allow me to do above and beyond. you got to say, Lord, I wanted this, but now I know I needed that. Hallelujah. Lord, I repent. Baptize me. Baptize me. i got to be effective in my preaching. i got to be effective in my loving. i got to be effective in my prayers. i got to be effective in my witnessing. i got to be effective in my presentation. There's got to be something in me that says, God, I had a small picture. It was man-made. Give me something heavenly. Let me see what you see. I want to be that holy vessel. Oh, hallelujah. There's somebody today, you're waking up and God is here. The Bible says Jesus is here and He's got an expectation of you. He wants to baptize you. He wants to make you effective. But you've got to say, God, here am I. Here am I. I healed. I die. I'll be a martyr for you. Hallelujah. Oh, make us bold for you, Lord. Make us bold for you, Lord. Let our cries be effective. Give us an effective expectation. You're going to cry it out and say, God, it's what I want. It's what I need. Jesus. 120 expected a shift. Do you? 120 expected a manifestation. Do you? 120 expected the promise. Do you? 120 said, I'm willing to die. Are you? 120 say, God, not my will be done, but your will be done. Are you? 120 said, if I have to lay down my life, then so be it that I can gain the life of Christ. Are you? 120 say, I will be a vessel for His use. Will you? 120 said that I got to do what God's will is, not mine. Are you? You're going to say, God, that is me. That is me. That is me. Pentecost is not meeting your expectation. Pentecost is meeting His. Oh, I can feel the presence of the Lord in this place. I can feel the presence. Master, we are here. Lord, come now and do something new, Lord. Touch your people anew, Lord. Come and allow us to look what you have desired to flow as you have desired, to operate as you have desired. You are our Lord. You are the potter and we are the clay. Anoint us vessels, O Lord. Let us today reflect the desire and the picture that you have. Oh, you got to see it in your eyes of your spirit. you got to see God. Oh, I can see it. I can see it. Therefore, I believe it. I've got an effective expectation. I've got an effective in this house. They could be an evangelist. God says, shift your view. In this house, they could be a prophet. God says, you got to shift it. They could be an apostle. Shift it. They could be somebody with the ministry of helps and administration. Shift it. There's somebody here today. God wants to use you. God wants to use you. God has a plan for you. Shift it. Shift your expectation. Allow that hunger, that holy hunger today to manifest in you. Say, God, no longer what I desire. What do you desire? Hallelujah. All in this house, people crying out. There's two groups of people today. There's two groups of people today. There are some that saying, I will seek Him. There's some that saying, I will lay down my life. There's some that saying, I will go on my knees. And if it means I'm humiliated, then so be it. I'm a martyr for the kingdom. I'm a martyr for the kingdom. And God is holy. This temple is holy. Oh, God is already manifesting in this house. There's already people experiencing the power. You're going to sit here and say, God, I desire it. God, I crave it. This is what I want. This is what I want. Hallelujah. It has to be in you. It has to be a part of you. Shift the way you look at it. Shift the way you see yourself. Hallelujah. 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 
sobra me se bayende, quebra sobre bien la mande. What does effective mean, Pastor? What does effective mean, Pastor? Now, if God's busy, if you stay on your knees, don't, don't get up. Let your spirit hear what I'm releasing. I'm not ministering to your body, I'm ministering to your spirit. What does effective mean, Pastor? What does God mean when He says He wants me to be effective? What does this word entail? The word effective means to be successful. It means be successful in producing what? His desired results and His intended results. You have to understand that God has a desired result. God has an intended result. When I go about my preaching of the gospel, when I go about my witnessing, when I go about my praying, God has a result. It means it's not what I want. It is what He wants. Therefore, I have to align myself with Him. Hallelujah. He in me and I in Him. And when I'm in Him and He is in me, oh my God, I can feel even now there's an atmosphere. There's an atmosphere. What are we doing? We're cultivating now. And the Holy Spirit is going to do His part. And the Holy Spirit is going to do His part. There's people this morning, for 10 years you've been speaking in no tongue or one tongue, but God says, I want you to pray my will therefore I give you a new tongue there's some people here this morning you've been ineffective but God says I want you to be effective what's happening now God showing you dreams and visions he says I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and young men shall see visions and old men shall dream dreams God now is speaking to your spirit man I release it now in the name of Jesus right there right now see what God wants to do for you and through you hallelujah 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 what is that desire that God has speaking the spirit's releasing it now that word means this to be successful it means to be fruitful it means to be productive it means to be powerful these are the things that God wants in his vessels you're gonna say God it is me it's what I desire it's what I desire I want to be fruitful I want to be powerful not that I might get the glory but that you might get the glory hallelujah hallelujah you say, then what does the word expectation mean? It just means this. It's a strong belief that something will happen. Do you have that strong belief? That He said He'll baptize me with His Spirit and power. That He said He'll baptize me with His holy fire. That He said He'll heal me. That He said He'll use me. That He said He'll send me. That He said He'll empower me. Do I have that belief that it will come to pass? You have the stamp of approval from Jesus. The Bible says He baptizes. He is the one. But as His fire is now in this house, hearts are being exposed and the fingers you got to repent repent if you came in here with the wrong motive now let it go the bible says before the spirit fell they had to make sure that all these wrong motives were dealt with that all these wrong ideas were dealt with maybe you were familiar give it to jesus say god forgive me maybe you abused his presence say god forgive me maybe you wanted to that you may be seen and not jesus be seen say god forgive me and when you ask him that prayer you go before him now and say god i believe god i believe god i believe God, I believe. God, I believe. And the Spirit will allow you to receive. He will allow you to receive. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is the seal of God upon His church. It makes you recognizable. It says that when Jesus stops, He can identify that you are part of His body. And He releases the power. Releases the power. He releases the power. He releases the power. He releases the power. He releases the power. And there are people that's being touched. And there are people that says, God, yes. They're saying, yes. I want that he touches them he releases it he releases it hallelujah he releases it and touches them glory be to God glory be to God glory be to God you're going to say God it is what I desire it's what I desire and he touches them oh there it is power fill it out Lord Jesus but don't wait for me to touch you because I am not the baptizer. There's one that's mightier than I whose sandals I'm not even worthy to, to carry or loosen. His name is the Christ. His name is Jesus. And he walks like a roaring lion to and fro, not seeking whom he may devour, but whom he may empower because he is the true lion of Judah. He is coming back with fire in his eyes and a sword in his hand. And God is equipping his church. He's equipping his bride. We are the holy ones. We are the hungry ones. Hallelujah. 
sopra me se viende. You're going to cry it out. Don't wait for me. There are people this morning who say, Pastor, that's me. Come to the front quickly. The rest of you pray in the spirit. Don't, don't drop the sound. Just stay there for me. I don't want you to look around. I don't want you to think about anything. If I've prayed for you, that's enough. If I've laid hands on you, that's enough. Come on. Come on, let's pray this morning. He said, when he comes upon me, effective prayer is my portion. What is your desire this morning? Is there a holy expectation to say, God, empower me. It's what I desire, Lord. Fresh. Touch now, Lord, more. They will say, but now touch, 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 fresh. It's a holy expectation. It's saying, Lord, I'll lay down my life. I want it in Jesus' name. Power. More, Lord. More, more. Now, fresh. Touch. Power of the Lord. Power of the Lord. Power of the Lord. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Touch, Lord. Jesus' name. Don't come looking for the spectacular. Let your faith be activated. Jesus. 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 Baptize them, Lord, for your glory. For your glory. Touch. Sebra among us, so that they must say they touch for your glory. Lehu masiba masene, kela soba ma touch for your glory. There it is, there it is. It's all over you. Take it, take it, Lord. Fresh encounters. Kela soba ma seba bende nende. Sebra be a soba manga soba be mi ande. Lord, touch. Yeah, yeah, there it is. 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 Drink it, drink it, drink it, drink it. Lego ma sipa mange. Sebra me sopa mo sepa vahando. Preto si pregende. Now, Lord. Power, power, power. Baptize him. Fire, 
Let's get to our feet, start praying in the Spirit. Let's get to our feet, start praying in the Spirit. Lift up your hands. Come on, let's saturate the atmosphere. Let's saturate the atmosphere. I don't want you singing now, I want you praying in the Spirit. Come on, come on. Lord, I break now every spirit. I bind every spirit of apathy. I bind every spirit of religion. I bind every spirit, Lord, of familiarity. In the name of Jesus, I pray now let your fire be upon these people. Now, now, Lord, never the same again. I release it. I release it. There's seven more seven. Come on. Lift up your voice and pray. Lift up your voice and pray. Be cultivating atmosphere. Be cultivating atmosphere. Yes, seven more so, baby, be on there. There has to be a shout. There has to be a desire. Everybody's just closing your eyes. I can't pause this session. I can't move on to the next session tonight. If we haven't given somebody who's maybe here for the first time the opportunity to give their lives to the Lord. And if you're here this morning, all this is new to you. And you've not yet given your life to Jesus. And you say, Pastor Devon, I want that. I want to know Jesus. I want to, I want to give my life to Him. If there's anybody like that here this morning, I want you just to lift up your hands quickly. Everybody's eyes closed. If you want to surrender your life to Jesus, there's one. Come on, let's give God a shout of praise. There's two. Quickly, come to the front. Come to the front. Come on, can somebody give God a shout of praise? Sobra, man, say the way your way your hand. Wait, wait, wait. Come, come to the front. Come, give me a hug.
want to give God a shout of praise. Hallelujah. I want you guys to close your eyes and lift your hands. This is just the beginning of this conference. And I don't want you to miss tonight because I have an expectation for tonight. Now you might be watching and I invite you to come and into the church. But if not, make your living room or wherever you are from because you can't come here a place where God can do something supernatural. Amen. But the rest of us, there's empty seats. Bring somebody with tonight. Let that effectivity manifest now as you leave this place. Amen. Father, we give you all the glory. And we ask that the work that has begun or begun in this conference is a work that you'll continue and finish. So let your will be done as we give you the glory. For we decree and declare that yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Come and give Jesus a shout of praise. Saints, I call you blessed. See you tonight. Don't miss tonight.